Welcome to the channel, Hayward here. There's a time and a place to use on-camera flash. Myself, I don't use it very often, but when I need it, I need it. In this video, I'm gonna show you four really super simple tricks that you can use to master on-camera flash and become really quite good at it. You're gonna be surprised how easy this is. For this video, I'm gonna use the Godox TT685 to flash. You can use any flash as long as it can automatically communicate with your camera electronically. In the Canon system, it's called ETTL. If you use a different system, your mileage may vary, but the idea is that the camera and the flash have to be talking to each other such that automatic flash exposure is set. Now, if you've watched uh, any more than a few videos on my channel, you'll know I'm a huge proponent of manual exposure. In this case, the flash, honestly, truly, for on-camera flash, can think quicker and do better exposures than you possibly can. Now, there's a manual component to your exposure here, I'll show you, but really, for on-camera flash, do yourself a favor and approach it from an ETTL point of view, especially if you are a beginner. If you're a professional wedding photographer, sure, you can run with manual, but for the rest of us mortals, <laughs> use ETTL and, and save yourself a great deal of heartache. In this video, another thing is gonna be a little bit kind of strange is the sample image I'm going to use were outtakes from a wedding I shot. A wedding is a perfect example of a time that you need an on-camera flash very often, wedding and events. And in these outtakes, the flash was accidentally showing somewhere in the image so I can show you what flash technique I was doing. I'm not going to often show you some bad images, so this is a rare occasion. Okay, let's jump right in. Your first trick. <laughs> if it's a trick, is to simplify. And we're gonna simplify, as I said at the beginning, by using automatic flash. Okay, if you have never done on-camera flash before, you're in for a simplicity treat. I have chosen a victim, this little book on the bookshelf over there. This is just to illustrate how to do it, and really just to show you how simple this is, because if you're doing this, you really want it to be simple. So. I've got my target selected. I have got my ISO set to 400. I am about two stops underexposed according to ambient reading. That's all I'm doing. I have set my white balance to flash. Now, as you can see, it's not. It's tungsten right now, but this guy up here is gonna take care of us. So that's it. I'm a little below what the camera thinks is a good exposure. I'm not really worried about my white balance because the flash I've set to white balance is going to go to flash. When the flash does it, that's going to make the exposure and blow away the white balance. Okay, let's turn on our flash. This is super simple. It doesn't get any easier than this. We go to ETTL mode. That means that the, the flash is talking to the camera. Guess what? We're ready to go. As you can see, the flash is now completely dominated exposure and the white balance is more or less correct. Exposure is more or less correct. It doesn't look pretty, but it's more or less correct. So let's say you wanted a little bit less flash exposure. That's not a problem. Up here, you click the plus or minus, and you say, I want a stop less flash. Shoot again. There you go. Underexposed, and it'll read underexposed, right? We're going to have the histogram all the way here. Here's the previous one. Much better exposed according. The flash is setting the exposure. This is simple. The flash is setting the exposure. Well, that didn't look really great, right? I mean, it, it wasn't particularly pretty. Not a problem. We can fix that and still be super simple. But wait, it gets better. It didn't look beautiful when we looked at these flash exposures, right? It's not particularly pretty because we're just pounding light right on it. I am going to reset my exposure to zero here, meaning I don't want the flash to compensate at all. But I'm gonna, this is how easy indirect flash is. I just point this guy straight up at the ceiling. We've got a white ceiling up here and I can reshoot. Now it looks 
a hundred times better. I, I don't know how it looks on the camera back um, in the video, but the light is even ambient and I didn't have to think at all. The flash totally calculates all the flash exposure. This has to be the easiest way to do photography as long as you help the flash work the light, in this case by bounce rather than direct. There's a difference. It's a big difference in the quality of light. If you still don't like it, if, if you say, well, I, I want a little bit less, okay, we're going to knock out a third and do the exposure again. Boom. There it is. I think that's really beautiful. I, I think if I look at the exposure, yeah, that's pretty good. We're a little on the dark side, but there's definitely nothing blown. Simple as it can be. Okay. That was pretty cool, right? You can change the quality of the light from your flash by just bending it up and aiming at the ceiling. We're going to do that again in a different way with this next trick. Okay, here's another tip. When you have to use direct flash, meaning the flash is looking right at your subject, you really don't want to use it direct. You want to use some sort of modifier like this. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of modifiers out there, but this one comes with this flash. So I'm going to show you how it works, how it, how it does what it does. It's got a silver reflector inside where the flash will reflect off of. And when it's on the flash, it looks like this. And once it's on, you can then set the flash up like this. It will, when the flash goes off, it will bounce off that silver reflector and go forward. It's like a little soft box and it softens the light up tremendously. And you don't have to think about a thing. The flash does the thinking for you. Pretty cool, right? Well, it looks cool. Let me show you how it works in practice. I've got a sample image here of some groomsmen from that wedding I was telling you about where I put a diffuser on the flash and in the red circled area, you can see that the flash is reflected in their glasses. And all this is, is a very soft fill flash to balance all that bright sunlight in the back. I didn't have to think about anything except setting my base exposure. How simple does it get, right? Once again, I'm showing you the absolute simplest modifier possible. It's the one that came with the flash. As you probably know, there are a world of modifiers out there for your flash. It's just got to be able to fit on here or your flash fit into it for it to work. Now, let me caution you on one thing. This area of the flash um, on this one has an infrared signal that it it, it does some measurements of your subject with. I'm not going to go into all the technicals, but this flash will take into account the zoom level of the lens that I'm using and focus the flash accordingly. Pretty cool. But in order for that to happen, this needs to be able to see the subject. So if your modifier blocks this, you may have some trouble with it. Other than that, knock yourself out with modifiers. There is so much potential on flash modifiers out there. Okay, here's the next trick. Yet another way to use your on-camera flash in a different way to modify how your subject is lit. I'm set up from a different angle now. I'm still looking at the same subject over here. It's still lined up this way. But we have direct flash. But we've got these big white curtains over here, right? It's white. Guess what? All you have to do is turn that flash to the side. It will now side light the subject. It will calculate it all. All you do is push the button. It what the, the magic of this is that you've got a base exposure and it fills in with flash. If it's too much flash, just like I showed before, all you've got to do is bring it down a little bit and shoot again. Okay, here's a sample image of using edge light. This was of the bridesmaids from that wedding and I had seconds to grab this shot. So I just had to quickly evaluate, saw that I had white, turned the flash to the side. This is what, again, this was an outtake because the flash is showing, but the arrows show where the flash was aimed and where the flash went to get an edge light effect. Don't hold me to this as being the best <laughs> of my photography, but 
When you have moments in a wedding, you've got to get them. And again, that's, that's probably the best reason to use automatic flash exposure if you don't do this all the time. I'm a portrait photographer. I, I do not do weddings all the time, but when you do a wedding, you got to get the image. Okay, here's the last trick. This will probably create the highest quality light from an on-camera flash. Okay, now this trick, if you can pull it off, if you have the environment to pull it off, meaning if you've got white overhead and behind the camera position, this will really create the best images. All you have to do is turn the head back and then up. So when you're here shooting, the, the light is going over your head. It's forming a giant soft box behind you, which goes toward the subject. This is the golden trick if you can find a spot to do it. Okay, I try and use this technique whenever I can, and I'm in this sample image again from the wedding of the groomsmen in the room where they were preparing. <laughs> again, it was a really small room and I had very limited time to get it. This was an outtake image because it shows the flash, but the flash was behind and over, and if you look at the light on the groomsmen, the light on the groomsmen is gorgeous. It, it's, it's really, because you've got such a huge light source behind you, the light is very flattering. You can see the arrows where the, the flash hit behind me and where it went on to the groomsmen. Beautiful lighting. If you've never thought about using on-camera flash before, hopefully I've inspired you. Pick yourself up an inexpensive, on camera flash, I'll have the links to this one in the comments. When you need it, you need it. And these four tricks really should get you going. If you got any questions or any comments on the video, hit me up in the comments as always. Until the next video, cheers. cheers.